Yeah, I would like to tell you three small stories. And these stories will tell you how needle and thread influenced my life. In 1915, my father was a refugee. He left East Turkey to the Middle East. He was Armenian, and he was seven years old. So by foot, a few weeks later, he was in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a melt pot of different religions, and of course, this was a wonderful place where many religions come together, Christians, Armenians, Orthodox, Jews, and Muslims. Since my father was an orphan, so he stayed in an orphanage because he lost all his family. He was on his own. So he stayed there in Jerusalem for 18 years. After that, again, he has to immigrate, and with my mother, they went to Jordan. Jordan in the Middle East. There I was born. And in Jordan, I learned a lot of hospitality and friendship. At that time, my <coughs> mother was a sewer, and my father an upholsterer where you could make sofas and so on. And they work day and night in order to survive in Jordan because they had nobody. I, as a child, I found out that with both of them were using all the time needle and thread. And using needle and thread, they could survive under these hard conditions. As a child, I had no toys at that time. What I had all the time in the vicinity was always needle and thread. So I had to do something with needle and thread because there were no other toys. So what I did is I took a needle and a thread and tried to be productive and creative and produce things like that. By doing this, I produced nice products with colorful products, green colors, and so on, and went to the school nearby and tried to sell these for the young girls. They liked it because they use it as a decoration here and there. <laughs> so this was the first experience of my life that with simple utensils, you can produce things that you can sell, and you can be, at the same time, creative. Of course, I was very interested to find out what can I still do with the thread and the needle. So I went out, outside our house, tried to find something because I didn't have any toys. I found many insects, many creatures who were uh, running around here, like flies and ants. And I asked the question, why can flies fly and why are ants so efficient? Why are ants so efficient they can go directly to the target and they take the shortest way, although they have no brains. So I used the thread, tried to make some experiments, and I tried to fix the flies here, <laughs> and I want to find out if they can fly, and I want to follow them. <coughs> In most of the cases, it didn't work. <laughs> At the same time, I tried to connect the ends and try to find out how do they move if they are together. And I had an interesting experience. <laughs> this was for the first time where I saw, where I said I have to be a biologist because I was really interested in biology and learned from nature. The question is, what would have happened if my parents were rich and I had an iPad at that time? Maybe I was in a completely different place. So later on, I had to go to school. And in the Middle East, if you have to go to school and to have a career, you have to go to a very good, excellent school. And there are only few in Jordan. So I had to go to school 
But as usual, we had no money. Again, needle and thread saved my life. Since my mother was a sewer, she was working at the British Embassy. So I said, and I used to go with her to the embassy and help her using thread and needle. We went there and asked the wife of the ambassador if I could go to a British school, English school, without money. And after a few minutes, she said, this is possible. So I, got, I could go to school for free. So it was really important for my career because this was a, a cornerstone that I could get and continue my studies. This was a, 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 extremely important. Now, I had my graduation in high school, and I had the opportunity to go to the best university in the world. The problem is limited money, no money. The question, where to go? And the best university in the Middle East is the American University of Beirut. It's a private university, costs a lot of money. And the question was, as 18 years old, young student, where can I go? How can I go to this university? So I was extremely optimistic in my life. So I said, I have to try to apply to go to this university. So I applied, and I was accepted. Only three people were accepted from Jordan. And I and was accepted, but I, I didn't have the money. So what to do? So parents and friends try to save some money, get some money together, and we could get money which was enough for six months at the university. So this means you have to bachelor four years, and they had only for six months. So I, I promised my parents this was not a problem at all. We could, I could go there, and I'll manage afterwards. I'll take care of the costs. And of course, this was for me a big venture because I was, sure, I was not sure whether I could do that. At least I could go to the American University of Beirut in Lebanon at that time, and this was a great venture. The university there has 4,000 students, and it was really a gateway to higher education, because here you could get the best education in the Middle East. After studying there for the first six months, I started to work as a receptionist on a telephone, tried to also give private lessons to very rich people there. The students were very, very rich, and I tried to gain some money there. And it worked until eight months, but later it was a big problem. What I had to do? I was lucky. I applied a scholarship by Kalus Gulbenkian Foundation, which supports students, and I was lucky to get the support. So now, after nine months, I was sure I can study and do my bachelor at this university. Again here, needles, syringes followed my life, or changed my life. I had to work with deep sea organisms, sea urchins. I have to always use these syringes. And again, I see needles are following me. But this was something positive. So I studied. My passion was to study biology. Because as you know from the childhood, biology was influenced my life. So I studied here biology at the American University. The years 70 to 76 were years of inspiration for me. And these years were the best years that I had in my life. This was the campus of our university. There I learned a lot of nice people, students, teamwork. The atmosphere was extremely pleasant. We had a lot of nice relationship between professors and students. And in this place, I learned to have really good experience with many, many people in that area, a lot of friendships. And this was extremely important. I learned to work in a team. I learned to know how we can solve problems together and not on my own. After Beirut, after getting my master, this was 1976, and there was a civil war after 75. So I had a big problem. I got my master's. I was going, of course, as usual. If you graduate from American University in Beirut, you go directly to the United States. And I could go to the United States and do my PhD. But I had the big problems. At that time, the embassy was one kilometer far from our university. 
So I tried to get a visa three times, and I was shot at, at the, with snipers. So I tried to hide myself behind the trees all the time, three times, and I said, it's not worth it to die. So, <laughs> so I had to do something. So this, I had to do something, it means to be flexible. Although I was passionate, I had the passion, I want to go to my goals, but I had a problem, I have to, I have to change my plans. So I had to go somewhere else. The nearest embassy at that time was the German embassy. <laughs> so I took the risk and went to the German embassy and got a visa. Now <coughs> means I changed my plans. United States, no. I had to go to Germany. Since it was a civil war, I couldn't take a taxi and just go to the airport. You had to give a lot of money to get out of the country. Again, I had no money. What to do? And the most painful thing that I did at that time, I had to sell my graduation ring in order to get some money and, and go out of Lebanon. So this means sometimes you have to sacrifice in order to get to your goals. So this means now I had my goal to go to Germany. No German at all, not a single word. And I had to go there. But I was very enthusiastic and very optimistic. At that time in Göttingen, I got the best mentor that I could meet. This was Gerhard Gottschalk, who helped me a lot as a uh, PhD mentor. And we had really good time. And he always took care of me like a father. And I learned that the important <coughs> is it always to have good relationship to your advisors and mentors. Here I had the opportunity to work in the lab, again with syringes, because I started with microbes, with needles. And here I had the opportunity to work in peace. This was not, not, no danger at all. So sometimes I worked three days, day and night in the laboratory, because I was so happy to be there and to work without any fear. And here I had only 80 Deutschmarks in my pocket. Today I have less. <laughs> so with this uh, small money, but I got scholarship, I could then my, do my PhD in Göttingen at the university. The next station was Hamburg. This is, Hamburg for me is a wonderful city, which is symbol for peace, tolerance, and internationality. And in Hamburg, I had the opportunity to be here at this wonderful university, Hamburg University of Technology. A wonderful place where you can work and with not too many people. It's a small university which you can do a lot in teaching and learning. So I had the passion, as you know in the past, to do biology, to investigate, to do research, to do something which can apply for the future. And I was, since I was a little bit exotic, I started to study microbes under extreme conditions in the deep sea, trying to, on the boiling water, hot springs, I try this on the Azores Island. I got nice samples with a syringe and a needle and try to investigate life under extreme conditions. So I was enthusiastic to know why life exists under so extreme conditions how, and how can we use this to, for future technologies. Needle and thread accompanies my life. You can see I found out that communication is extremely important in the uh, future. Because at that time, I tried to bring people together. Because I learned this from the beginning. And in Europe, I had a big project, when coordinated a huge project with 50, 60 universities in the field of biotechnology and external fire research. So I learned that networking is extremely important. And I think it's for everybody. Without networking, it will be difficult to solve problems of the future. It was extremely pleasant to know that what I did and my path was really accepted by the scientific community. And I was awarded 2004 the most prestigious uh, uh, prize in Europe for environmental protection, the Deutsche Bundesstiftung Umwelt Prize, from our president of Germany. So I see that recognition is extremely important, and we could find that this has been really the path that I had was not wrong, so I came to a good place. Now I am president of the Hamburg University of Technology. 
And of course, needle and thread is becoming more and more important. I need needle and thread to bring people together. I'd like to communicate, to bring, to connect students, professors, employees at this university. I'd like to bring disciplines together. Disciplines which are extremely important for the future. Because it's like a carpet. If you bring disciplines together and with co connecting them with a thread and needle, you get a wonderful carpet. And this is what we need for the future. And I believe this connection will be extremely important, not within the university, also outside the university. So we have to go to triple helix, meaning bring scientists together with politicians, with economists. All these people have to come together to solve problems of the future. Education is extremely important, and this is a resource that we have. And I believe that for a key to better life is education. And this is very important for our society. And we believe that by modern, uh, different uh, methods in teaching, we could solve the problems of the future. It's important not to be only an engineer or a scientist. You have to have emotions. I learned uh, knowledge alone is not enough. IQ alone is not enough. There's a huge part. EQ is important to be able to move things, to be able to work in teams, to understand each other, and try to solve problems of the future. IQ and UQ will lead you to success. We have a lot of challenges in the future. We should think out of the box. The challenges, but we have also opportunities. We have not to see this as a problem, but we have to see these as opportunities. As we know, growing population is dramatically. Scarce resources getting less and less. Climate change. And all of these things we can do. We can try to solve these problems by producing or having new technologies. And there's a new way. We are really uh, seeing now a uh, big challenge. And we are now really trying to solve these problems by solving, by getting these new technologies. So from my life, I can tell you that I followed my passion. And I was always looking for my goals. So I have an ad advice for you. Keep always looking and try to communicate all the time. Don't lose faith if you have some problems. If you don't succeed, don't worry. Try, try again. This gives you more strength. But be fair to each other. And don't settle, like me, moving all the time, and then trying to get the best thing what you can. But love what you do. If you don't love what you do, you will never be successful. So if you think the job that you have is not good enough, you don't like it, leave it. Because you have to have a job that you love. Stay foolish. Not really foolish, but stay foolish meaning try to always get ideas from different people, from others. And of course, stay hungry for knowledge and all important things that you can find from your friends, from the society. Connect and try all sometimes to use needle and thread. Thank you very much.